All right. Um, I would like to call the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, meeting to order for Tuesday, February 24th, 2015. Um, I guess before we get started, I'd like to welcome the new member, Stanley, and I'm going to hack your name. Wisniewski. Wisniewski. Thank you. Welcome to the board, Stanley. Glad to join you. Um, do we have to re-elect the chairman and the secretary, or what? <laughs> All right, we can come back to that. Um, I guess the next order of business will be to approve the minutes of December 10th, 2014. Um, I was not at that meeting, um, but Matthew was. Actually, do we have? Uh oh. You weren't at that meeting. Mm -hmm. So two members were at that meeting who were here? We probably have to table that for the next meeting. Okay. okay. So we'll, we will table the approval of the December 10th, 2014 minutes until next meeting. <clears throat> um, next, before we get to the new business, um, we have a draft 2015 zoning board meeting schedule. Um, do these dates look okay for everybody? I mean, it looks like the April date's not over April vacation. I think other than that, I think they're okay for now. Like as we get closer to some of these other meeting dates, I guess we can always. Is that the Tuesday before Thanksgiving? So two days before the Thanksgiving? November, uh, November 24th, <coughs> maybe? Yeah, it's the week it of is. Thanksgiving and the week of Christmas. Uh, yeah. <coughs> should we move those now? Yeah, that, that's the one we typically combine those two meetings okay. to the second week of oh, December. December. Okay, why don't we do that again and then just change the submission deadline to correspond to two weeks before the second Tuesday of December? It would, uh, the second Tuesdays are taken by the planning board, so second Wednesday, Wednesday um, right. would be December 9th. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Um, any other preliminary matters? Okay. Um, we will now move to the new business, and that is to hear the request of Melissa Redman for a conditional use permit for a home business Reiki studio at her house at 58 Kettle Cove Road, map U16, lot 24. Um, Ms. Redman? And I'm just going to hop in really quick before you get up to say that I'm going to go ahead and recuse myself. I would not if we didn't have a quorum, but even without me, we will have a quorum. Um, Melissa and I work together, and um, I enjoy her, so <laughs> <laughs> I would feel. Um, so I'm going to go sit in the audience. And um, I would have. <laughs> I'm going to bring my husband also with me, um, Chuck Redmond, as well. So I'm Melissa Redmond. And if you want to um, just give us some background um, regarding the proposed home business um, and uh, why it should be approved, and then the board will ask any questions that they have. Okay. Um, I, I, Melissa's the applicant. I'm, let's, I'm the general manager. Let's put it that way. Okay. Um, uh, Melissa would like to operate a Reiki studio uh, out of the, our house at Kettle Cove, J. Kettle Cove. We basically would take a, a small bedroom, nine by nine bedroom space, and convert that to a room where Melissa would would perform Reiki. Are you familiar with what Reiki is? It's um, it's a it's an ancient Japanese really art and therapeutic art of, of rechanneling the body's energy to make it more harmonious and it's it's non-invasive there are no chemicals no uh, no type of toxic situation it's really just rechanneling energy limited touching and so forth but basically it's a it's an ancient art that that if we hearken back to years ago when we thought that either chiropractory or or things like acupuncture were sort of strange Techniques now they've become sort of mainstream. Oh, Reiki maybe at that point is quite well accepted in in, in 
obviously in Japan and other parts of, of the world, but it's relatively new here, but it, it's really a, it's a kind of, of therapeutic technique that's, that's growing in popularity, but it's really very, very non, as I said, non-toxic, no, no chemicals, very light touching and so forth. And we take, we, there's a massage table, a really portable massage table that we set up in the bedroom and have uh, clients come in typically, uh, it's about a one hour session with, with interview before and afterwards. We don't expect to have you travel. Melissa has a full time job. She's, she's, we probably do this uh, maybe in the evening and on weekends. Uh, I think as she's from the application, you can see that, that uh, Kettle Cove Road is a very busy road. Uh, we don't anticipate any impact on, on traffic. Uh, I mean, if we had uh, any impact on traffic, we'd probably be moving somewhere else because of the level of, of uh, from a percentage standpoint. We expect it to be, you know, a part-time job uh, and something that hopefully that you'll approve uh, because I think it, it does, there's no, we don't, there's no, there are no signage, no modifications of the interior than a new paint job in the, in the bedroom. Uh, and uh, no modifications of the exterior. We have, we have off-site, off-street parking, so hopefully uh, you'll approve, approve the studio based on uh, the fact that I think it has minimal impact and, uh, on our property and certainly no impact on the neighborhood. Any questions? Any questions from the board? Can you, can you just expand a little bit? You said you had off-street parking, so just talk a little bit about how many spaces you might have available for, I don't, I don't know how big your driveway if is. You look, if you look to the, to the left of the house, there's a paved area, and there's really space easily for four cars. Okay. We have three cars full-time in the family, so there's room for a fourth car. And if we need any extra space, we've got Scuppy Olson next door who lets us park over there anyway. But really, we have, there's, there's enough room right in that little parking area for, for a fourth car. And we, there'd only be one client at a time, typically there, because you just don't have the capacity to handle anybody more than just one person. Then he or she would leave, and there'd be somebody new coming in maybe an hour or so later. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. One question just for Ben, I guess, while um, the uh, Redmonds are up there. You had added a condition if all four bedrooms ever become occupied, either the home business will be discontinued or the septic system will be expanded accordingly. That's because the septic system is only sized for six, was it six uh, residents? It's, it's sized for four bedrooms. For four bedrooms. Uh, which is, you know, typically is six to eight people for, for a four bedroom septic system. Okay would be about right. So so there is plenty of room in the septic system to take on an, One. an occasional client. It'll be a, a, a minimal impact to the system, but if the system was ever used to full capacity, it would still need to be accounted for. Okay. So Ben, that's a follow-on question. How, how, does, how do we enforce that? I'm not saying it's going to happen, but um, if they become occupied, then what's the mechanism for that to for that to finish out there? Well, I mean, typically it would be if the, pro if, if the property changed hands mm -hmm. and, you know, generally when the property changes hands and someone has zoning questions about the property, they would come in and talk about it and it would come up in conversation. Uh, someone would say that they wanted to continue using the conditional use, use permit with it after a property transfer. So, and the would, so the condition does expire when it changes hands? Correct. Correct. And if they, if they took on uh, roommates and boarders and that sort of thing, is that something we would ever see or? 
it would just happen? Uh, it, it's not something necessarily we would know about, but generally when a, you know, when the use of a house increases, I, I usually hear about it from, from neighbors, especially if, if they began to use four bedrooms to their capacity, uh, plus use the, this conditional use permit. Uh, they, they would, there would be a lot of traffic coming in and out of the house, and they probably have some traffic problems, and I'd probably hear from the neighbors, but it is theoretically possible that I w we wouldn't know about it. Okay. Of course, notice has gone out to the abutters um, of this yes. uh, request. And have you received any letters or comment from any abutters? I didn't receive any comments or inquiries. Okay. Any other questions for the Redmonds? Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, not seeing any public here. Um, I guess we don't have any public comment, um, and no uh, comments were received from uh, by Ben after putting um, the neighbors on notice. So I'd like to open it up for discussion of the board. Um, I mean, I'll just say, looking at the definition of home business in Section 19.1.3, and then also the standards for conditional use approval. Um, I mean, I think everything's addressed in the application and also based on the presentation. Um, and I would be in support of approving it. I cannot recall the last meeting, but there was a, a yoga studio that sought a similar yes. um, permit of condition use. And that's roughly in the same neighborhood. Um, and had similar details for the application as well. So I, I do not see a, an issue as well. Great. Would anybody like to make a motion? Anyone? Uh, sorry, Chair. Do you want to actually just double check that we actually meet the requirements or we want to do the motion first? Um, we can go through the requirements if you'd like. You want to go through the requirements of the home business? I mean, I was going to read the findings of fact, but if we can, um, from my, I mean, from the application, which is in the record, and from what they've okay. presented. And the finding of facts mirror the requirements anyways. Yes. So. Um, do I hear a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the request of Melissa Redmond for a conditional use permit for a home business Reiki studio at her house on 58 Middlecombe Road, map U16, block 24. Second. All in favor? Okay, so that is approved five to nothing. Um, now gonna move to the findings of fact. This is a request for a conditional use permit for a home business Reiki studio at 58 Kettle Cove Road, map U16, lot 24. Two, Chuck and Melissa Redman are the owners of record of the subject lot. Three, the proposal is consistent with the definition of home business found in section 19-1-3 of the Town of Cape Elizabeth Zoning Ordinance. Four, the proposed use will not create hazardous traffic conditions when added to existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. Five, the proposed use will not create unsanitary conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air, or other aspects of its design or operation. Six, the proposed use will not adversely affect the value of adjacent properties. Seven, the proposed site plan and layout are compatible with adjacent property uses and with the comprehensive plan. And eight, there are no proposed external alterations to the building or the site. And there's one condition, which is, if all four bedrooms ever become occupied, either the home business will be discontinued or the septic system will be expanded accordingly. Um, all in favor of those findings of fact and the condition? Uh, right. Point of order, perhaps. Um, the CEO circulated an updated findings of fact. Oh. Yeah, sorry about that. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't check my email. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> condition number two. This approval is granted subject to all elements of the final plans and specifications submitted by the applicant and to all representations, oral or written, made by or on behalf of the applicant in support of the application. So all in favor of the findings and the two conditions. 
I have nothing. All right, so the request uh, for conditional use of permit is approved. Thank you. Um, we do need to choose chair and secretary. Okay, we do need to choose the chair and secretary, so if you want to come back. <laughs> Um, and uh, one final order of business is to choose a chair and a secretary for um, this year, for the zoning board. If anybody else would like to be the chair, I am happy to <laughs> step aside. Anyone? <laughs> All right. You do a great job. <laughs> um, Somebody would like to make a motion to, for me to be, do we have three motions on that? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah. I move that you remain as the chair for the next year. year. Yes, that's just a year's time. <laughs> <laughs> Until the end of your term. <laughs> it's the second of years. Okay. All right, all in favor? Do I vote on that? Probably not. All right. Well, and for the secretary, Who is you were this year. <laughs> Clearly, there are significant <laughs> duties involved with being the secretary. So, would you like to do this again? <laughs> sure. Yeah. So, would you like to make a motion? Make a motion that Joanna continue in her role as secretary of the Zoning Board of Appeals for the. Uh, year two, 2015. I'll second that. All in favor? All right. That's unanimous. <laughs> um, any communications? All right. With no communications, then would somebody like to make a motion to adjourn? So moved. All right. All in favor? And we are adjourned. <laughs>